if I'm elected, you won't lose one plant. You'll have plants coming into this country. You're going to have jobs again. You won't lose one plant. I promise you that. I promise you that. I've worked at uh, Ingersoll Rand back when it was Cooper, before Ingersoll Rand bought us. Uh, I started out in shipping and receiving, and uh, up until the time I was laid off, I was a quality inspector. In its heyday, as far as bargaining unit members, we had well over 300, and in the last year, we've been down to about 130, and right now we're down to about 35, and six months from now, I, there won't be anybody left. feel connected to this group as I've represented them for at least 10 years. Uh, several contracts we've negotiated together. When I first started representing them, it was Cameron Compression. We had a wonderful relationship with Cameron Compression. When Ingersoll Rand took over, things seemed to change a bit. They weren't at all as interested in keeping the union uh, as part of a team, if you will. And under the previous ownership, it was like night and day. It was, you went to work, everybody uh, enjoyed their job. They made money hand over fist. Uh, it, it was a much better place to work. We all know, it's not a, not a secret, uh, workers are who make the, make the money, make the product, make the profit. But the big problem was, it, it, it seemed that the company wanted to close and they ran about four years worth of doing everything you can imagine to get to that point. For uh, a lot of years, this uh, location was very profitable. There are other things they could do away with if they wanted to save money, um, but uh, I don't believe attacking the workers is, uh, is the way to go. And this facility provided a good livelihood for the people that worked here, and uh, their uh, left scratching and clawing to try to find something to replace it. The new facility in China hasn't built a machine yet that they were able to have passed through tests. So until they do that, they'll continue to struggle. Um, they do have a location in Italy that uh, is able to do some of the smaller units, the way I understand it. Um, but none of them are able to, to do with uh, uh, any regularity what we've done here for a long time. It makes me wonder why they originally bought this business if they had any real intention of being successful uh, with the engineered to order machines or if they were just uh, trying to get rid of a competitor for the plant air machines or both at the same time. I don't know. I think once they made up their mind that they were going to close this place no matter what they were going to close it. Uh, even while we had, had discussions about a closing agreement, you know, they're, they're saying things like, well, it's, it's best for our, uh, it's best for the company and our, our shareholders to make this move, you know, while we're sitting in here and our membership is wondering what's going to happen with, with th their lives. I think people are wonder why, why does it have to happen? Um, and only Ingersoll Rand has that answer. And they'll give you an answer, it'll just still make you scratch your head. It really makes me feel bitter and, and so, to some degree sad to see a, a once thriving plant getting shut down for uh, no apparent reason. I think they made a mistake and uh, it affected a lot of people, myself included. I think it's unfortunate that the world has evolved this way, but. Uh, I'd just like to say and try to remind people that um, people are not numbers, people are human beings.